Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to, I guess, the first talk of the day after the keynote. Or no, not first talk today. It's our first talk of the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so I'm Urvashi Bonani. I'm a software engineer on the Containers Runtimes team. Um, I work with all the container tools that you all know and love, Cryo, Podman, Builder, Scopio. And I'm Sally. I, um, also, I work on OpenShift. I've been on a few different teams. Uh, right now I'm on what's called the Workloads team with um, our CLI and controllers. Um, I have worked on the containers team in the past, and um, Arvashi and I just love giving talks together. We love traveling around, and it's fun. Um, except for last night, like at 2 a.m. at the Barcello, yeah. where Arvashi yeah. was spinning up VMs, and I was trying to get a cluster going. Yeah, but we're here. And yeah. uh, so our talk today, last year we gave a talk on um, the, build, uh, the containers tools. And uh, this year we thought we'd just give an update of some new features, uh, new things going on with Podman, Scopio, Builda, and Cryo. Yeah, so we would like it to introduce you to the superheroes of the container world, the container commandos. Um, hopefully one of them has already saved the day for you. Uh, so a few years, in the past few years, we have been developing a few container tools, sort of breaking them down into focusing different areas in the container space, trying to follow the Unix philosophy so they do one thing and do it really well. Yep, so Podman is the general purpose, um, pretty much one-to-one one -one, um, Docker CLI is, uh, you can do anything with Podman, uh, same as Docker. Um, it's a little, it works different, but uh, it's a general all-purpose run containers on your local system. Um, Scopio is a tool that's meant for um, managing images uh, from remote registries. Uh, you can inspect off of a remote registry without actually pulling it down to your system, um, moving images from one remote registry to another, um, even uh, moving between arches. And um, Nolan has a talk later about, about that, um, so that should be really interesting. Um, so that's Scopio, and then Builda is a tool developed just for building images. Um, and Cryo is for running containers in production. Cryo is meant, to, is meant for Kubernetes. You're not really meant to run Cryo on your, lo you know, on your local system. That's what Podman's for. So Cryo is locked down, uh, fewer permissions, very opinionated for OpenShift and Kubernetes. And then, um, of course, um, there's OpenShift too. Yeah, um, so tying back more to like making them work well together, Podman Build actually uses Builder under the hood to run its builds. Uh, and then um, in OpenShift, all the S2I builds that run are using Builder and they're spinning up clusters with Cryo. And so, yeah, over the, just over the past few years is when uh, Red Hat has been developing these. Yeah. So we're sort of going to uh, dive into each of these tools and talk about the new, the new development that has happened since last year, um, some of the cool features. <laughs> and I think that our talk is going to be short. Urushi doesn't think so. So if it is short, then we can open up a discussion at the end. Um, we have some containers experts in the audience. And um, yeah. We'll see where it goes. So, so Builda, uh, like I said, it's for building, um, building container images. And uh, we, uh, the tool really encourages best practices for building securely. Uh, with Builda, um, building minimal images is uh, very easy. And that, that's the key to security. The more you have in your image, the more that can go wrong. So Builda has this command, Builda from scratch, which uh, sets up a working container with absolutely nothing in it. Uh, just sets up like the C groups and the namespaces and then you can set up a mount point uh, from your local system and you can do things like in, in move binaries into the, the working container. You can in use your host system's package manager to install something rather than um, do that in the image, in the, you know, bake that into the image. Um, and then once you're happy with what's in your working container, you can just commit it and um, there you have an image with exactly what you want in it and nothing else. So that's the idea with minimal images and building securely. Yeah. Um, so if you all went, if 
you guys went to um, Dan Walsh's talk yesterday. He sort of talked about the three bears, um, the papa bear, mugger, and um, the baby bear. So uh, with Builda, we have that sweet spot between performance and security. Um, you also give the users the option to make it as secure as they want, but that will, that will affect their performance. And if they make it the least secure, I mean, if they make it as fast as possible, that would affect the security. So we will um, also demo a way of having that sweet spot in the middle where you ha you're both secure and you're not um, giving up on the performance issue area. Yeah. Uh, they probably weren't at Dan's talk yesterday because it was the same time as our talk, <laughs> and you guys were probably all at our talk. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and as we said, OpenShift4.x um, Open uses Builda now for all their builds, and it's the default build tool in RHEL 8. Oh, yeah, yep, and um, the build without root, yeah. So I, I, I use Builda and Podman, and um, I, I just forget that I'm running it rootless. I always run it rootless until I get stopped. Um, I get stopped if I'm trying to do something that requires root on my system, um, because with rootless, it works up to a certain point, but of course, just because you're running a rootless container doesn't mean you can go and do something on your local host like mount, you know, slash Etsy. Um, you can't do that rootless because you can't do it rootless. So there are, you know, and my recommendation would be just run rootless until you can't, and then, you know, for those special circumstances, then go, to, go with root. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Demos. We have some live demos for you. <laughs> a lot can go wrong with this um, talk, a whole, like really a lot. So if it goes smoothly, <laughs> we deserve um, something. Hopefully that's big enough for the people in the back. Um, all right, let's get started. Oh, one second. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the beginning. That is not the beginning. So the beginning one is um, uh, with Builda. We're going to do some demos with Builda. And um, Builda can use the CPP <coughs> processor for Docker files. So in a, in a minute, you'll see it. But um, say you need to build a slew of images for different distros. So basically, you'd have a Docker file. Um, everything would be the same except for a few lines. Like uh, if you were Ubuntu, something with app get. There or, you go. Or um, with Fedora, you'd, you need DNF. So basically, you have one Docker file where everything's the same, but you have a few diffs depending on like what distro or uh, yeah. So um, you can use the CPP um, like pound define, pound include, and you can have a single Docker file, and then uh, Builder can handle um, the replacement to create, um, you know, to, to use the if defs to create the image. Yeah. So, yeah. This so is, here if you want to do Ubuntu, you just pass the ubuntu.in. And it's using the Docker file, but just making that one line replacement. Yeah, so that created my Ubuntu here. We could have done something cooler, like install something or, but, you know, the internet. Yeah. This is especially useful when you want to, I don't know if you mentioned that, you want to build for multiple distros yeah, and it's like yeah. the same, you have like 20 same lines, only one line is different or two lines are different. Yep. And then there you go, my fedora is built. <coughs> All right, so when I was talking about that sweet spot between performance and security, so the most secure way is to run your build process completely isolated from your host system. That is building it inside a container. Uh, and I am doing this with Podman here. I am using our uh, stable builder image, which is just an image that has all the builder functionality in it, so you can just pull that down. And inside the container, you can use builder as you would use on your machine. Um, so as you can see here, the time it took was like five seconds here. Uh, so this is the most secure way, most isolated. You're not sharing anything. You're not exposing anything. And there is no um, daemon, so more secure. Uh, and then this is the least secure way. Basically, you're volume mounting your varlib containers on your host into the container. That is where all your container storage is, basically. And you're disabling the security. So this is actually it was slower than the first one. I don't know why. <laughs> um, yeah. So, but this is the fastest way to do it because you've already pulled the images down onto your host machine, you're just volume mounting it so it doesn't need to reach out again to the registry to pull it down. 
and it can start it pretty immediately. Um, and then the last one is sort of the sweet spot between the two where you are creating an additional storage. So basically you're mounting um, your storage on your host into a different location in the container, but you're also setting it to be read only. So if your process in the container tries to write to this path, it wouldn't be able to and it wouldn't affect anything on your host. So, and it also doesn't compromise on the performance. As you can see, it was faster. Uh, so, um, uh, so Builder is now used in OpenShift as of OpenShift 4. Uh, so in 3.11, uh, Cryo was the runtime engine in OpenShift, I believe. That's correct, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we still required uh, the Docker daemon to be uh, on every host, every node, uh, because our builds were dependent on the Docker daemon. Uh, we have two main strategies. Uh, so, well, first of all, one thing that differentiates OpenShift from Kubernetes is the fact that you can point OpenShift to a source code that isn't containerized or even has a Docker file. And we have um, two strategies, the Docker build strategy and the source to image strategy that can uh, interpret your source code from GitHub and uh, provided you use like best practices for whatever language you're using, we have um, builder pods uh, like Python or Ruby or Node.js that know how to assemble um, a containerized application from source code. So uh, in OpenShift 3, we used Docker for our builder pods. Um, in OpenShift 4, we're utilizing, um, well, the limitation of that is you have the Docker daemon exposed in your builder pod. Now, a regular user can't exec into those pods. It was pretty secure, but theoretically, that introduced a security issues. So um, in OpenShift 4, we use Builder, Builda inside of a Builder pod. And um, you, as a user, you don't really notice the difference, um, and that's, that was our goal. But it's more secure, and uh, you, we don't require the Docker daemon anymore on the nodes. Yeah. So um, I, okay, so I want to show this. So here we have OpenShift 4 running, and I have a sample Django application. That's one of our samples source to image. You can go on GitHub and find it. It's like, um, you can just type in like OpenShift Django application, you'll find it. So I, I launched it, and um, we both are sharing our kubeconfig, so I'm gonna push a chain. Uh, earlier I set up a GitHub webhook. With OpenShift you can uh, create a webhook through the GitHub settings so that every time you push a change to your uh, GitHub repository, it will kick off a new build. So I wanna do that so that you can see the build pod pop up and through the logs you can kinda of tell that it's build working. So here I'm gonna to push to master and hopefully a new pod will pop up a builder pod. It did this morning. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. It's still pushing, it's not. <laughs> Is your internet? Yeah, we might have to come back to this. It's like just pushing. <laughs> I am on Wi-Fi. Do you want the internet? Yeah, we could, yeah. Oh, it's, oh, I need my adapter, yep. yeah. Never mind. <laughs> Damn it. X1 carbon. Oh, everything up to date. Okay. Did I make a change? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me one sec. Is anything popping up there? No. <laughs> All right. I'm making a change. She's making a change. Yeah, you see that. <laughs> Get git commit a new change. Damn it. One file change, eight insertions. Git push origin master. Yeah. I did this. Everything up to date. What the freaking frick? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we, should we move on? Yeah, we'll move on. We'll come back to it. All right. <laughs> 
live demos. Um, okay, so that was Builder. We will get back to the S2I builds demo. Yeah, we will get back. Yeah. Um, okay. So the next tool we're talking about here is Podman, which is the, an all-in-one all CLI tool. Uh, you can do everything from running containers, building images, um, and also you can also spin up pods in it now, hence the name Pod Manager. Uh, <clears throat> so in the past uh, year, the new things with Podman is that we have um, added a lot of the Podman pod commands to it, so now you can easily spin up a pod, sort of replicate what it's like in a Kubernetes cluster. Um, uh, a pretty cool feature that I think is one of my favorite commands is Podman generate cube. So you know, after like you have played around locally, you've made your containers, you're happy with it, et cetera, and now you want to run in a Kubernetes cluster, an OpenShift cluster, you now have to sit and think of how to like Put it in a YAML file. There's a lot that goes. There's a lot more that goes into it than just doing a Podman run command with a bunch of flags and everything. So to make life easier for developers and users, we created this Podman generate cube, which auto automatically you can um, pass a container to it. It'll automatically generate the cube YAML for you. Then you can just plug that in into your cluster and run a container with a pod or however you configure it um, very easily in the in the cluster. Um, the next one is Podman generate system D. Similar concept, it creates a system D service file, um, a, a service file with it. So basically, the idea behind this was you can easily share your Podman containers and your Podman commands um, between machines. So let's say on my machine, I have, um, I'm happy with my container. I, I like the way it's running. It's like running a simple small web service or whatever. And now I want to share this to like 100 different computers. So all they need is the Podman CLI, and I can generate this unit file, and I can pass it on to them. And they can just start the unit file, and it will spin up the container for them. It will start the processes that started with the container. Did I miss anything? No, I think you're good. Yeah. And the, yeah, rel yeah, um, so this is a default container CLI in RHEL 8, and um, Podman also supports cgroups v2. So with Fedora 31, it defaults to cgroups v2 and CRUN, and we are sort of, sort of pushing it into the game, and we move Podman. We give Podman the support for cgroups v2, basically. So in Fedora 31, if you have cgroups v2 enabled, you can use it. So let's just go back to the console. Okay. Um, even if it didn't pop up, which that's really strange, like. I don't understand. Oh, I can go into the um, pods and show you the logs from before. Perhaps. Complete it. There we go. Yeah. So, like, just before we came into the room, where's the builder pod? There it is. These are the logs from the build a build. You can see we uh, our source to image uses an assemble script, and in OpenShift 3, it used the assemble script to just build the image, but in OpenShift 4, uh, we've streamlined everything, so our Docker build plus our source to image build are pretty much the same, uh, so they both produce a Docker file. Um, and then uh, what is supposed to happen? It, did you push? No, I did. Yeah, it's what the heck is, I don't understand. Anyways. <laughs> you can just trigger it manually. Yeah, I can yeah, trigger can, it manually. You can just action and trigger yeah. manual. So maybe you're not looking for it. Yeah, it's not though. Where is action? <laughs> the action's where? Yeah. Eh. It's not that interesting, anyways. I just it's fun to watch the it's fun to watch the blue circle pop up, but I guess we don't get to see it today. We can go back. It literally worked like ten minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So back to Podman. Yeah. Did you have so, anything else um, to add? No, yeah. we're good. Let's let's go to demos. Demo time. User namespace and a user namespace and a user yeah. namespace. <laughs> all the memes. You're gonna talk about Podman Pod. Yeah. All right, so just going to demo a few of the Podman pod commands here. Um, you have the Podman pod create, which creates a pod for you. Um, when you do pod list, you can see it, it created it, gave it the name Funny Pascal. Um, and you can see the number of containers. So right now it just has the infra container in it. That's why it's just one container. Uh, and this is just just showing you uh, more information about the pod here. Yeah. And so now I'm just going to add a container to this pod. I'm just going to run an alpine image with the top command. Uh, and then when I do the PS, you can see the number of containers has gone up by one. So now I have two containers running inside this pod. 
pretty much how pods work. Uh, yeah, and then when I do ps dash dash all, oh yeah, that was the infrared container there. So this is my Alpine image, and it, it tells you which pod it's running in under the pod name here. Uh, yeah, that's Podman Pod, and there's more to it. That was just a small highlight. So let's do the cube generate one right now. So like uh, Urvashi said, it's a pain in the butt to um, generate your YAML for Kubernetes objects. So if you have a pod running, uh, you can run um, podman generate cube, and that will give you the YAML that you can then um, upload to Kubernetes to create a pod in OpenShift or Kubernetes. So here, a podman container run label is a command that um, can read a run label in a Docker file, and it will start that image with whatever you, you tell it to. Um, so we're using podman container run label, and we're running that in the background, and um, from that, let's generate some YAML. So, um, well, here's, it's just a simple web server, so mm -hmm. it's running in the background there, and uh, okay. there is proof that it's running. <laughs> so Podman Generate Cube is pretty easy. There's the help menu. Uh, you can pass it a file to save, and then uh, you can use, like, OC apply with it. So here, that would not be really easy for me to whip up um, without a lot of Googling, so... I'm glad that if I needed to um, run a pod, I, I have this tool because it makes it way easy. Save it to a file. Yep. Yep, so it's saved to the, that, that file you just saw is saved to my local system, and now I can, again, we're using that same cluster um, that I have up. Oh, actually, we could, we could, well, we don't need to. I'm curling, so. Error. Yeah. <laughs> what the what? Something. <laughs> <laughs> what does it say? Something forbidden. Validate against any security. That is really... Are you in a VM? Are you in your... I'm on my host. I did not hear that, sorry. Huh? I couldn't hear that. Yeah, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, but this worked five minutes ago. <laughs> Is there something wrong with that YAML? No, I think that's yeah. fine. Something with the cluster. All right, we're skipping this then. <laughs> the we'll try it again at the end. The whole script just exited out. <laughs> Not a good day. All right, you can continue talking about what you would have seen. About the um, what's not, oh the Podman generate yeah. cube yeah I'm just fixing the script that's all we've I've actually never seen that happen yeah mm. all right um, Oh, never mind, that didn't matter. Okay, my bad. <laughs> okay, uh, so next one is the yeah. generate system D. Yep, just like Podman generate cube and just like uh, OpenShift objects and YAML, those aren't fun to write manually, neither are system D unit files. So I asked um, Dan the other day, like, what would be a good use case for running a, running a container in system D? And he said, like, with edge devices, say windmills or oil rigs, you might have a bunch of um, you might have a bunch of uh, windmills that all need to run one single service and don't have very good connectivity. So you can generate a systemd unit file to just run that single service. You don't need like OpenShift or Kubernetes, but um, with systemd you can do that. So here I've created a pod running in the background, and from that pod I'm going to create a unit file. And there it spits out the unit file. Again, I would have to Google this. I don't know how to write unit files, um, so it's very convenient. Um, now, once I have that unit file, I saved it um, to my, uh, the correct directory on my host. 
And I can now start that service. It's just a pod running top. And you can see the, um, it it's fair. not really failed. It's like if you go They're down to the bottom. Ones. Yeah, I'm yeah, on the yeah, end. Yeah. It started successfully. Yeah. So those, that's the, um, I think that's the journal CTL logs. Yeah. And now I can stop it. And you can see if I go in Podman PS, the pod has stopped. Um, if I now start it again, the service, you can see the pod has popped up again. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so that is, and here's the top logs from inside that container. Um, so yeah, it's really easy to run a container with, through a systemd service. Yeah. Um, so just to sort of show how, so one of the main advantages using cgroups v2 is that you can run rootless podman and be able to um, configure your cgroups resources. Um, with cgroups v1, that's not possible. So I'm just going to try that with, the, uh, with v1. And you get this error that you can't do it. Um, and now I am on a Fedora 31 machine. and. I'm going to run this with Seagrass v2. <clears throat> so on Fedora uh, 31, by default, the runtime that's used is C run, which is uh, basically you run C by written in C, and it has Seagrass v2 support. Yeah, so the, the reason why um, Seagrass v2 hasn't been implemented uh, yet very widely is because uh, it doesn't work with run C. Um, there's some work being done, just Giuseppe is not here, but he has uh, rewritten run C in C, and it's C run. And he's also working to uh, make big. run C work with C groups V2. Yeah. Um, so with Podman Info, you can see here the OCR runtime I'm using is C run. Uh, so let's do there, and my container created successfully. All right. Uh, I think that was it for Podman. Yeah. Yeah. Back to the slides. All right. Scopio, again, that's our tool for inspecting images from remote registries, um, moving them around, uh, copying from one storage to another, or even from one arch to another. And we just have a simple demo for that. Yeah. Um, so Scopio is pretty stable. It's um, not much has changed in it in the last year. But uh, one thing that's changed is that now you can copy um, uh, images of different arches. So if you're on x86.4, you can get an ARM image. And um, you can copy it over. So that's uh, a pretty cool feature. And if you want to learn how you can um, do builds on different arches, go to Nell and Stock today at 2.30. Yeah. He will deep, uh, deep dive into that. Um, so Scopio was our first container commander. It was the first break off, um, the first um, like <coughs> point of where we started dividing these container um, technologies into different aspects. Uh, so one, one demo we think is pretty cool is copying over images. So with Scopio, you don't need to have the image locally on your machine. If you have it in registry A and you want it in registry B, you can just do Scopio copy, and it will copy it over without downloading it locally. Um, so I'm just showing an image of copying it from the image, the storage uh, that Docker uses to the storage that Podman uses. So um, I'm going to copy the Ubuntu image over and name it Ubuntu Demo in Podman Images. And as you can see here, that's where it popped up. Pretty simple, not much, nothing uh, complex about it. And that's what we have for Scopio. All right. So there you go. Um, OK, so the last tool is Cryo. So now we have built our images. We have tested them locally and everything. We have shared them to our registries, internal, um, external, et cetera. The next thing you would want to do is probably run these in a production cluster. So that's where Cryo comes in. Cryo is a tool. It's um, a lightweight daemon uh, that, runs that talks to the CRI and runs containers in a Kubernetes cluster. It is made specifically for Kubernetes, as um, Sally mentioned earlier. Uh, so whatever, whenever Kubernetes makes changes, we match it. Whatever version um, Kubernetes is on, Cryo matches that version. So if Kubernetes is 117, Cryo 117 is, um, works with it. So it's sort of like a way to make sure you don't have to have tables to see which version of Cryo works with which version of Kubernetes. It's pretty simple. Um, Cryo joined the CNCF incubator last year around March, I believe. Um, so we're an incubation project in the CNCF now. It is the only runtime in OpenShift 4.x clusters. Um, 
And uh, with Cryo, we are very security focused, so we will talk a bit about those um, features here. Yep, and uh, Urvashi is a maintainer for Cryo, and the only talk <laughs> that we haven't given together is when she had to go and give a keynote at KubeCon. <laughs> yeah, anything else? Uh, no, well, FIPS mode support. Yeah. Cryo's always had FIPS mode support, and now we have FIPS mode in um, OpenShift as well. Yeah, um, another one is registry mirroring support. So let's say uh, you are you want to work sort of in a disconnected environment. Um, you don't want your clusters to talk to the internet. Uh, you can mirror all the images that are on the external registry to a private registry that your cluster actually has access to. And Cryo and all our tools will actually know to fall back to the mirror registry because it won't be able to talk to the internet. So we will demo that as well. Um, all right, more demos. Yeah, so the first one is cryo with mirrors. Uh, so I'm not running these commands, I'm just showing you what they will be. So the first one is setting up a local registry on my machine. So that's my private registry. And then using Scopio copy, I'm copying over an image from um, my repository on Docker Hub to my local registry. Uh, and this is the digest. So the thing about mirroring is that you have to reference the images by digest because this guarantees that the image you're getting from a mirrored registry is actually the image you want. Uh, so we have a common file called etsycontainersregistries.conf. Uh, this sort of is where you add your um, <coughs> logic of what is mirrored to what. So here under registry, my, I'm saying my primary look, registry is this one, repository, like, registry slash repository is the Docker Hub one, and then I'm mirroring it to my local host one here. So basically, when you try to pull an image with Cryo or Podman or whatever, it will actually try your mirror first, because usually it's um, faster to get, because that's usually what you want if you have a mirror set up. And if it, you can have multiple mirrors set up, so it will go through all of them, and the first one it hits and gets the correct image, it will pull that in. If it doesn't, then it finally falls back to the external one. Um, so I'm going to try to pull my Alpine with Docker pull because Docker doesn't have the mirror registry. So I'll just show you that my, my image actually doesn't exist on the Docker Hub. So now, but I can still pull it. When I try pulling it, it works because I have already mirrored it over to my private registry. So Cryo knew to fall back to that and pull it from there. So a so, lot of our customers require disconnected environments yeah. where they um, don't have access to um, the internet, so this is this came out of that yeah. requirement. Yeah, um, another one is, it's a work in progress, basically, so we're adding the support to um, drop the infra container when you spin up containers with cryo. Um, so basically there's some cases where you don't need it. Well, the, the infra container is that, um, that small, um, it's Kanman, that small container that uh, is watching uh, for this, the standard error, the exit code, um, yeah. that's always running with any Podman container. Yeah. Um, so basically, if your server, like if your server is, can manage the namespace, you, you basically said that uh, this, this option here, manage namespace lifecycle, so it can set the lifecycle. So whenever your process is like, for example, exit, you don't need, a reaper to come and reap it, it'll automatically clear it out for you and everything. So, uh, but this only works if you are sharing a PID namespace at the node level. So, so in, in Kubernetes, if you have this set, uh, you don't need the infra container. Well, yeah. uh, in any environment. Uh, yeah. So I've said that, and this is my pod YAML. I am setting my PID to node level here, which is one. This just increases the efficiency, efficiency yeah. a bit. So it's still a work in progress. We're still um, working on it. So now when I do sudo run c list, you will see that um, there's no infra container that was created. There's no docs on this yet, yeah. because last night at midnight, we were like, what do we say about the infra container? And we had to go and sift through the pull request, the code to the comments to be like, okay, this is what it does. <laughs> yeah, and then now the second one, I, I'm not sharing at a node level anymore, I said at the pod level, and now when I run it, you can see an infra <laughs> container was created. So. There is, so Cry is putting in the automatic code to like drop in for containers when not needed. Uh, yeah. And you don't, you don't need it, uh, when you don't need it, it's because uh, the, it's being cleaned up by Cube, Kubelet? What cleans it up in Kubernetes? I, I believe your server, it just gets managed by. It gets managed by something else yeah. other than Kanban. 
Yeah. All right, so one more thing we wanted to show was um, we mentioned that Cryo is a pretty, has a pretty big focus in security. So we have this cryo.com file here, which usually gives the users the ability to, when you go in, you can quickly, you can easily change things regarding security. So we have, for example, we have our capabilities list here. Um, so the, the capabilities are uh, like parcels of pseudo power. So in Podman and Docker, there's a long list of capabilities that are enabled by default. Yeah. Um, in Cryo, it's a very short list. And we would recommend, if, if you know what workload you have, to go in and remove any capabilities that you don't need. Yeah. So you can easily go in and drop some, add some, et cetera. Another one is the read-only mode. So um, when in production, it's always ideal to run your containers in read-only mode. So if, uh, if someone, if a bad actor actually gets into a container, they won't be able to change anything because you won't be able to write to any parts in there. You should only be able to write to your volume mounts and your tamper fast. So when you said this to true, all your containers run in read-only mode. Um, yeah, so you uh, can- The second filtering, oh, yeah. you can set that up too. Yeah, so, so you can set the second profile up on profile. So we have a bunch of different things that you can easily configure to make your um, uh, containers run as securely as possible. Yeah. So just for the record, I ran the cube admin, the cube um, generate cube script locally, and it did pop up a pod if you want to go and check it out. Oh, it did? <laughs> yeah. I guess something was wrong. I'll go to projects, because it's in like test something. So here's OpenShift 4.3. When I went to log in, it was a little different because uh, 4.3 was just released. So the, the console, is, there's some updates that I noticed. Whoa. Test app. Uh, not test app, it would be in a different project. It's like something else. <laughs> it's like something else. Uh, it's the K1, go up, 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 up. Yeah, hello, but just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So anyways, the, the pod, <laughs> Podman Generate Cube does work, and I OC applied it, and yeah, the, pods, the pods spun up here. Yeah, that's, you have the pod running. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> All right, uh, so you want to talk about the housekeeping? Yes, this is very important. Uh, this is, you know, something that you, uh, the past few weeks I've been building a lot of images, and there, it's, a, it's a big image, it's like a builder image that has a ton of stuff in it. And uh, I always run Podman rootless, like I said. So my, my home directory all of a sudden was out of space. So um, I had to make sure I was cleaning up my images. So um, with Podman, if you're running in root, your storage is located in, your, in varlib containers. Um, if you're running rootless, it's located in your home directory. That's how we do it. So um, it's important to um, Podman system prune and pseudo Podman system prune because th they won't um, delete each other's storage. You need to do both when you're cleaning things up and the volume prune also. Um, but if you want to be sure to like just clear everything out, uh, it's not gonna break anything if you just um, remove that local share containers and varlib containers. I, I actually usually just do that because it's easier. No, and it doesn't break anything, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had an image that was like, well, not an image, but it's a multi-stage build, so one of the, the layers was like eight, eight gigs, and like that was just, <laughs> yeah. A few of those, and oh, wow. Yeah. We took up all the time with our... Broken scripts. All right, so these are some resources um, you can check out. We have a pretty cool coloring book on all these um, projects called Con the Container Commanders Coloring Book, and you can find that on that GitHub link. Um, the demo script and slides can also be found on that link there. Uh, and yeah, so do check out the other talks we have on Podman Build Dental. I believe Matt is giving a talk today, um, more of a deep yep, dive Matt, on Podman. Matt Heon and, and um, Nalan. Yeah, Nolan's giving a talk on the build of stuff with different architectures. So yeah, do check it so out. So basically, the, the the new exciting stuff is C Groups V2 in Fedora 31. 
Um, the Podman Generate System D and Cube is kind of cool, um, but it, it, it would be really cool if you guys all used it and like made it better. You know, made new features, extended it, whatever, made it more u useful. Um, so please do that. And um, I'm anything sorry else? This for the live demos. It wasn't Not too bad. <laughs> it wasn't too bad. I promise that the GitHub webhooks in Overshift really are, they really work. It worked, I don't know what's yeah. going on here, but um, it's very easy to set up in GitHub and just push yeah. your code to your repo and then a new build triggers. Yeah. We've actually done quite a few talks with demos and it's never crapped out on us as much as it did today. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep, that's it. Thank you. Anything else, Dan? Did we forget anything? Yeah, you have, any yeah questions? Do you have any questions? We have a lot of people here that can answer anything if we can't too. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, can you can you repeat it? I missed part of it. Is there an effort going into verifying signatures with those images? Oh, verifying signing. Yeah, um, there is. There is. There is, and um, we had that discussion in the runtimes talk yesterday. And Dan, can you? Uh, where is it? It's not. It's there's a group started to discuss it upstream and downstream. Um, nobody can really agree exactly on what needs to happen, mm -hmm. um, but there is a group of people working on it and you could probably join too yeah if you yeah uh the difference between builder and calico 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 um i do not know Nalan, do you know? The, yep, here. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, now admittedly it's been actually a bit more than a year since I last looked at Conico, but my understanding is that it runs entirely inside of the container and that makes certain things like multi-stage builds a little bit more complicated. The longer version is the build also is running a truited environment inside of your build. So you're, it's trying to do as best as it can an approximation of running a container inside of the container when you're building inside of a container. Both of them are trying to solve that particular problem. Uh, if one works better for you, then I'm not gonna feel bad if you use the other one. But you know, we'll continue to try to improve the offerings that we have. We good? Yeah, I didn't see anything else. All righty then. Thank you guys. Thank you. Mm -hmm.